well, how big of a problem is the animal side as opposed to the human side? They're both a problem. We're overusing antibiotics in both places. But just from a number standpoint, if we're talking about human antibiotics, these are penicillins, tetracyclines, sulfa drugs, uh, cephalosporins, macrolids like erythromycin. Those are, those are what I'd call human drugs. And you, if you look at all of those sold in the year in the US, for whatever reason, 64% are being sold for use on farms. 64%. We, gotta, we have to not only focus on kind of the big picture problem, we should zero in on which kind of animals seem to be getting antibiotics most intensively. And this is, this is from uh, a report that I put out in November. So it's pretty recent number crunching, but I think it's really interesting. It shows that um, the chicken industry has actually been make, doing, making great strides to reduce their antibiotic use. Right? And before, we thought it was a good thing, but we didn't really have a good indication of the impact of it. This is an indication. We have an enormous chicken industry, nine billion chickens a year for slaughter, but they're using antibiotics measured by intensity. I mean, the milligrams of antibiotics used per kilogram of chicken produced at just a tiny fraction of the rate that they're used in turkey production or pork production or beef production. So, you know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna stand in front of people and saying, you know, you should only, you know, you shouldn't eat any meat. What I'm saying is even if you do eat meat, you've got a choice. If you eat chicken, you know, if you're really concerned about antibiotics, if you choose chicken, chances are the upstream production of a chicken uses a lot less antibiotics than the upstream production of the same amount of beef or pork or turkey. And turkey's the worst by this measure. So happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> now, of course, the turkey industry, though, is teeny. My home state, Minnesota, biggest turkey producer. The number of major turkey producers is like practically on two hands. It's a small industry. So even though they use antibiotics very, very intensively, it's a teeny industry. What are the big industries that also use a lot of antibiotics? Beef and pork. So one of the things we can do is find ways to try to convince the beef and pork industries to move in the direction that the chicken industry has already gone. No routine antibiotics, minimize antibiotic use wherever possible invest in alternatives to antibiotics to keep your animals healthy. We know how to do this. It's already been done. We just have to do it. Oh, I'm gonna skip through that. It's not only farms that need to do a better job. We gotta hold our leadership accountable. And frankly, they've done a, a not very good job. Well, I could say it a lot more strongly, but They've, they've done a pretty crappy job. Given that we've known that the, the key from a policy standpoint is to reduce antibiotic use, this is what's not been done by Congress over the last, uh, since 1977, 42 years. They have never passed legislation that tackles this problem head on. Instead, Congress has kicked the can to the FDA and said, let the FDA take care of it. Even though Congress back in 77 said to the FDA, don't you dare reduce antibiotic use in animal feed or we'll cut your budget. So now they've been telling FDA, you take care of it. And FDA did, did finally in 2004, 15, 2016, passed a guidance, a recommendation to the pharmaceutical industry to stop selling drugs for animals for growth promotion. I told you about that, right? They asked industry, pretty please, won't you please stop selling your products so that you can make less money off of them. <clears throat> um, 
And you know, after a couple of years, the industry did it. And then after the fact, the FDA said, okay, industry's taken them all out of their um, product list, so now we can make it illegal. So they did that. January 2017, so here we are two, just two years later. I'll tell you later that some European countries started this process in the mid-1990s, okay, 20 years ago. We're just getting started. But what has the FDA not done? Well, I'm sorry, let me back up. What have they done? So they've got rid of growth promotion by hook or by crook. And for the first time ever, they said you can't go down to Menards or Fleet Farm or Walmart and buy these antibiotics for animal feed by the bag. You used to be able to buy them over the internet. I could buy a 20, 50 pound bag down at the feed store. Um, anybody could. So for the first time in 2017, January, they said, no, you can't do that anymore. For these human drugs, you need a veterinary prescription. So for the first time, vets are actually involved. So that's a good thing. It's not enough though. It's not enough. Oh, why isn't that working? There we go. Um, and where are the gaps? The gaps are what I talked about before. They got rid of growth promotion, but you can still use the same drugs often at the same dose in animal feed, delivered in the same way, oftentimes without any time limit. So it's not like a 10-day course like in humans. Many of these animals can get the, as long as they have a vet saying it's okay, they can still get these antibiotics in their feed for weeks, months even. I hope they don't. We don't know for sure, but they could. What else don't they do? The FDA, the US government, has failed to ever set a target for reducing antibiotic use. And this is really in high contrast to countries like Denmark, the Netherlands, the United Kingdom, where practically everybody who's been involved in those countries has said, gee, the most important thing we did was to set a target and say, we want to reduce antibiotic use in animal production by 50% in the next six years or whatever, whatever it is. In the US, the FDA and the USDA have said, we are not interested in setting targets. And I would say, you know, speaking as a parent, if you don't set a target, you're never going to get there, <laughs> right? We also don't track as I said earlier, where antibiotics are used. So there's nobody out there going to farms and asking them to say how much antibiotics they used and for what purpose. So it's kind of out of sight, out of mind. And that's, that's a big reason why we're, you know, decades later still talking about this. Now, in contrast to the FDA, the World Health Organization is doing something a year ago, they said flat out, stop using antibiotics to prevent disease in healthy animals. Boom. The UN is a member of the World Health, or the United States is a member of the World Health Organization, right? Um, they were not happy about this. Um, in fact, the uh, Chief advisor, chief science advisor to the USDA said that this was not based in science. And keep in mind, this is the World Health Organization, right? So I, I think they know the health science at least as well as the USDA. We can do better. 